Harry S. Dent Jr. He is a best-selling author and one of America's most outspoken finance editors. Using proprietary research, Harry has developed a unique method for studying economies around the world and uses his analysis to provide insights into what to expect in the future. Instead of focusing on endless charts that assume people act rationally, Harry looks at real people and makes real economic decisions for themselves and their families. It combines demographics with actual spending to inform its research. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's happening for the US inflation rate, and are we heading a serious stock market crash? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. Two things I really want to bring up. You mentioned inflation. Let's go there first. I just had Jim Rickards on who thinks we've already hit peak inflation. The worst is behind us. Of course, I've had other experts on who think it's just going to keep uh, running. Uh, where do you where do you sit with it? Well, I'm, I'm in between on that one. I have the best inflation indicator in the world. Workforce growth. No, no economist would think about that. Incorporating young People in the workforce take stakes in you know, investment in, in computers and trainings and offices, all this sort of stuff. That's the biggest correlated with inflation over time. Inflation has been falling since 1980, right with my indicator. It should be 2% today. And what's that at? 6.8. We'll count, call that 4.8% inflation created entirely out of the recent stimulus. So that's what the stimulus has done. As soon as we have a slowdown in the economy or they stop stimulating, I agree, inflation's gonna fall off. We could be at peak now or soon, would I mean, be my guess, more like with Jim Brigham, but it's gonna take a drop in the economy to stop. If the economy does not slow down, we do not have this downturn, then inflation is likely to edge up at least for a little while. So, but, but inflation's already up way more than it should be because of stimulus. So. Uh, and then, and the stimulus is no longer escalating. They're looking at tapering. So I say, yeah, we're probably near peak inflation, and it it should go down to zero or or negative. And then when it when we come out of this downturn, you are not going to see inflation over a couple percent for the rest of my lifetime. And most of the people listening to this, almost guaranteed. Workforce growth is going to be damn near zero as we go into the future for the U.S. and, and Europe and Japan and, and, and the Eastern Asian countries developed are worse. So okay. inflation is gone forever. Stagflation? Well, no, no. The 70s was stagflation because the baby boomers were ending the workforce. You have to remember, we weren't printing money in the 70s. We were running deficits, but governments are going to run deficits when costs are going up and you're having recessions. So from the late 60s to the early 80s, it was an inflationary, recessionary economy. That's called the, the, uh, the uh, summer season, okay, in, in my long-term thing. That's what would you expect to happen. This is not that. This is temporary inflation that is not going to last past as soon as the economy slows down, and it's not going to come back when we get out of it. So you won't see inflation at 7% a couple of years from now. Will not. Will a recession be triggered? Yeah, well, again, what tends to trigger recessions and stock market crashes after a really good boom like this is that inflation starts rising from overcapacity and overstimulation and all this stuff. And then that triggers, you know, slowing the economy, that triggers stock markets to crash, and then that builds, and that's what, and then that washes out inflation, brings high unemployment, lower spending, and that brings inflation down. Uh, yeah, to this point, let's let's talk politics a second here. Joe Manchin, um, you know, putting a dent, no pun intended, in uh, in Biden's uh, Build Back Better plan. Your thoughts there? Yeah, well, I mean, again, look at what they. I've got four point nine trillion in monetary stimulus. Now they're talking trillions of dollars in infrastructure. This is the biggest overreaction in history. They've been stimulating now for a decade, 12 years, which would also tell you if an economy takes nonstop money printing and now endless fiscal stimulus just to grow at a couple percent, then the economy without it would be in a recession. So that, that should be obvious to people. People don't think that way. Why has the economy, see, when we went in, that came out of the, you know, in late 2008, early 2009, they printed the first trillion. If, the, if that would have just been a normal little monetary correction, you know, a little rebalancing, and it hadn't have been a big demographic downturn and all that sort of stuff, we would have come out of it. It wouldn't take 12 years of nonstop stimulus to keep a dead name, dead economy going. That's what we've been living in, a dead economy. When we have this recession, we will wipe out all the excess money and all the excess debt. That's what recessions do. Make everything more productive. And 
by the time we get out of this recession, we will have fundamental uptrends again because the millennial generation is going to have their boom from 2024 to 2037, something I've been predicting forever. That's right in the demographics. That's not something that changes. So we have to clear this out. Otherwise, we're dooming the baby boomers are dooming the millennials with our debt bubble and our financial asset bubble, which are all have to get washed out because they're not real. In your forecast, um, how much is the new variant weighing on uh, the stock market correction? Did you calculate that into your forecast, Harry? Well, again, that's another short term thing, just like COVID. Yes, that I said that's one of the triggers that that's, that's, you know, hurting this endless stock market advance with printing ever more money. Okay, but it's also the government and the Fed sees this and says, oh, my God, we got through COVID. Now we got this new variant. So that's, you know, that's what's keeping them from saying, well, we were going to taper, but, you know, they're going to keep backpedaling here. But but again, I'm just waiting for that first crash. The only thing you can do is that first crash. I say will be so violent that, that that people will finally get what they've already thought in the back of their head. Oh, you really can't live on just printing money. We've been living on printed money since late 2007 when we went to the 2008 downturn. Why? For very good reason. Because the biggest generation in history finally peaked in spending, and the and the down and the trends have been low since. We have been living 120 percent on money going in the economy, ultra low interest rates, a, third, a t- 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 10 year treasury bond of 1.4% with 7% inflation. You think we would have that without all this manipulation and money printing? This is a totally artificial economy, which means when it blows, it's gonna blow even harder. It's not so, even real. I understand you don't wanna pin yourself to another month, um, but if I had to say, when does the first tranche of the crash happen? Is it Q1, Q2, Q3, any indication? I, I think Q1 is the, I, I think between now and January uh, is the most likely time for, the, I think it may have peaked in November 22nd, okay? Because a lot, I've been tracing stock markets, different sectors here and around the world. You know, almost everything is already peaked except for the NASDAQ and the S&P. That's the only thing, small caps are down 13, 14%. A lot of countries have been down for months. Uh, emerging markets have been down for over a year. The bond market peaked a year and a half again, the corporate bond market. These are all leading indicators that say we're building towards a crash. And like I say, it, it, it's hard to predict. When does that happen? It's possible November 22nd was the peak. We could also get a peak sometime in the first quarter. I'd be extremely surprised at this point if we don't peak and get that first crash starting in the first quarter. If it goes past then, I'm just going to be like, I don't know what to say. I mean, literally, there's a point where you have to say, I don't know what to say, because this has never happened. No, governments have never fought a a bubble like this or boom, which they created. This bubble would not have happened without governments. The 2000, 2000, 2007 bubbles, those were more natural. This is totally artificial. So you have said you would retire if the crash didn't happen. I know. I, I, yeah, I, I am considering uh, retiring, I wouldn't retire from my research, but I would consider saying, you know, I don't know if I'm going to write a newsletter anymore. You know, I'd have to go at least a year if I did that. But yeah, I, I have considered that. If, well, I've said if we can go all the way through the end of 2022 and not see this crash start, then I would say, yes, I don't have much to say about the economy anymore. It's still a bubble, still got a blow, but then I have like, I have no idea if it can last that long. I say the odds are 90% it does not make it that long without this first crash setting.